<clears throat> so I've been getting some questions about uh, the different types of, of charge density and how to handle those, especially in Gauss's law problems. So we basically have uh, three different situations where we're talking about a charge density. We have lambda, which is a <clears throat> linear charge density or charge per unit length. Sigma, which is a surface charge density or charge per unit area. And rho, which is a volume charge density uh, or um, charge per unit volume. And so if we think, uh, so I've, I've got three different pictures here, all of cylinders or uh, situations with cylindrical symmetry at least. Uh, we have a wire, which is a one-dimensional thing, so it has, all you can characterize it by is a length, and so it has a linear charge density. We've got a hollow uh, cylindrical shell, which has <clears throat> only a surface area, so the, uh, the charge density gets spread over the surface, and then we have a solid cylinder. Um, now, this mostly applies to the context where we're talking about non-conductors, right? Because if you have a non-conductor, uh, especially with the 3D volume, right? In a non-conductor, you can have a volume charge density that is evenly distributed throughout. If we had a conductor, then we know that all the all the um, charge would move to the surface. Right? So in all of these contexts, you're trying to use this charge density to figure out what the charge is that's enclosed by your Gaussian surface. So, in the, uh, the case of the wire, the linear charge density, um, you're always enclosing all of it. But what do I mean by all of it? Right? So, you can't get inside of that one-dimensional thing, right? Uh, that's why we call it one-dimensional. So, if I have this, you know, uh, Gaussian surface that I've drawn, it has, you know, I have to pick some length. And so, that means that the total enclosed charge for here is going to become lambda, which is a charge per unit length, times length. Right? So if I do lambda L, that's going to give me uh, charge per unit length times length gives me a total charge. Right? And with Gauss's law, uh, what we're assuming is that this arbitrary length of, of the Gaussian cylinder that I picked uh, should not affect any physics, so eventually that will cancel out. Here with the uh, the hollow shell, well, first of all, uh, I've drawn my Gaussian surface uh, assuming that I'm looking at a point outside of the hollow shell. Because right? if I were inside the hollow shell, uh, it's hollow, so that means that I'd be drawing a Gaussian surface inside that encloses no charge. Right? So that one's really easy. But if we're outside, then I need to say, well, how much of the surface area is being enclosed by this uh, Gaussian surface that I've drawn here in black? Right, so again, you have a, uh, an arbitrary L that's drawn there, but you can't just multiply sigma, which is a surface charge density times the length, right? It won't give you the, the total charge. You need to multiply it by an area. So Q enclosed is going to be sigma times the surface area, and that's going to be the surface area. Well, it always refers to the, the real thing, right? So the, the real uh, cylinder which is a, a shell, the one that I've drawn in green, that's where the charge is, right? So it doesn't have anything to do when I'm saying what's the enclosed charge, right? That's the physics that I'm calculating. Um, so I have to refer to the, to the real object, not to my Gaussian surface, which is just a mathematical uh, construct, right? So it's going to be, well, the surface area is going to be this length times the circumference, right? So that's going to be... Um, Pi r l, sorry, 2 pi r l, uh, to give me the, the circumference of this cylinder uh, times, times its height, right? So that'll give me the total enclosed charge. Now, the last case with the, with the volume uh, charge integral, that's the one that gets uh, trickiest and depends the most on whether you're looking inside or outside. All right, so if I'm uh, looking at a point outside of the cylinder, then I know that the I'm enclosing all of the charge that is in this length. All right, so I need to find the volume of the cylinder that is between this point and that point. 
right? And I'm, again, I'm talking about the real cylinder, which has a radius, capital R here. So um, the total charge density is going to be rho times the volume that you're enclosed. Right? So that's going to be uh, Q enclosed is going to be given by rho times the volume. And uh, I'm running out of room here, but that's going to be equal to um, the volume is equal to uh, pi r squared times the length, right? So that's just the volume of uh, of a cylinder. Okay, I'm going to pause here. Actually, I can't do that. Okay, go ahead and erase. Uh, so now we have another case where we could be looking inside of the cylinder. And we want to look at a point there. All right, so if I uh, have this case, so let me draw this cylinder big enough. All right, so here's my solid cylinder. So if I draw, you know, if I'm interested at the electric field at a point here, I need to draw a cylinder, of course, that uh, is centered on that. Uh, or sorry, includes that point in this and is centered within the cylinder. So now the enclosed charge is going to be rho times the enclosed volume. Well, now I'm not enclosing all of the cylinder. I'm in, only enclosing up to this distance, right? So this distance, the radius of my Gaussian cylinder is what matters, not the radius of my, uh, my cylinder of charge. All right, so again, Q enclosed is going to equal rho times the enclosed volume, which is uh, here, you know, it's rho times the volume of the Gaussian surface, right? So the volume of this cylinder, how much of the charge is inside my Gaussian surface, everything outside doesn't matter. And so that's going to give me rho times pi r squared L, but in this case, the r is the little r uh, referring to the Gaussian surface.